Honors bio, how's it going? Uh, I'm back home from school, freshly vaccinated. Um, good stuff. So uh, one short lesson today, our last non-Mendelian pattern of inheritance, which is called incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance, not to be confused with codominance, slightly different uh, patterns here in some ways that are too much for us at this level. But but the basic, the way we're going to know it this year is as follows. Um, instead of one allele being dominant, similarly to codominance, um, they both are, but uh, you don't see them separately. You don't see in a, in a heterozygote, you don't see both alleles identities separately. You see a blend. You see um, and, and colors are, are very much the easiest way to illustrate this. So, for example, um, in a flower called the four o'clock, uh, there's a white allele and a red allele, and we get one of each. The flowers are pink. Well, so in incomplete dominance, we don't want you to think that it's two different genes. So we still want to use the same letter. Can't use capital and lowercase, or you'll think that one's dominant and one's recessive. So the way we solve that is we use both capital of the same letter. We just put a mark next to the one that, um, well, whichever one you want it to be. Which is again, this this it becomes a real good habit to to write down which allele means what. So for example, if we have a problem like this, red and white four o'clocks. Um, and there's red and there's white and then there's pink, um, we're immediately going to write down, well, okay, I want, and again, you can make this whatever you want, but I want big R to be red and I want big R with the little mark, call it an apostrophe, call it prime, whatever. Um, big R prime to be white. Ah, thought I was getting better at this. Um, and okay, predict the phenotypic ratio of offspring if red and pink flowered four o'clock plant are cross pollinated. Again, we're back to Punnett squares. Sorry, I told you we were never doing them again, and here we are. But, ooh, look at that one. Um, I'm going to make a modern art exhibit of all my jacked up Punnett squares. So, if a red and a pink flowered four o'clock, that would be big R, big R for the red four o'clock. The pink is going to be big R, and then big R with the mark, and we fill in the square and we give the ratio. And these two are gonna be big R, big R prime. In other words, heterozygotes. And so there's the Punnett square, the ratio, there's two reds and two pinks, which means that is a one to one ratio of red to pink. Uh, um, all right, so that's a, a very kind of standard example. I want to do one more just to kind of bring it home here. This is a weird one, maybe a little bit ethically questionable. Um, in this problem, uh, we're imagining Pooh raising a colony of tiggers. Um, some of them have horizontal stripes, some of them have vertical stripes. When he mates the two types, he gets plaid tiggers. First of all, I know, real weird. I didn't make it up. It's from a book. Um, and the fact that, so, so, you know, we had examples for sex link. You just have to know the three examples. We know that blood type is codominance and multiple alleles. We know how eye color is um, both epistasis and polygenic, this is one you're going to have to recognize. If you see two phenotypes blending to create an in-between phenotype, if tall plus short equals medium size, if horizontal plus vertical equals plaid, your brain needs to say that's incomplete dominance. So we need to pick a letter. Um, before we get into the actual questions here, let's pick a letter and let's just say that um, T is horizontal and T with the mark is vertical. The setup tells you that um, when he makes um, a vertical and a horizontal tiger, you get plaid. Well, that 
that looks like a, an F1, right? P to F1. That's just two T's, two T's with the mark. And all the offspring are heterozygous like that. But the actual question is, if two plaid tigers are mated, draw the Punnett square, predict genotypic phenotypic ratios. So easy enough. Again, we're, we're very looking like Mendel here, even though it's not Mendelian inheritance. We're taking two plaids. That's a T, T prime crossed with a T. You could do this in your sleep, right? Oops, not me. A T prime. And so we get one of those four, which would be what? Horizontal. Uh, one of them has the two marks. That would be our vertical. And then we have T, T with the mark, B, e, T with the mark. And those are both going to be plaid tiggers. So the ratio of um, horizontal to plaid to striped, and also the ratio of TT to TT prime to T prime T prime. They are the same. So genotypic and phenotypic ratios are the same. They're going to be one to two to one. Um, I guess that'd be horizontal to plaid to vertical. Our last pattern of inheritance to review. Let's compare our patterns of inheritance, sort of a roundup of all the ones we've done. We have Mendelian, one gene per trait, dominant recessive, you know, Punnett square is the thing you're used to. Then we had sex linked, which we used for baldness, colorblindness, and hemophilia. That's the one where you have to write the X and the Y with the superscript alleles. Um, did a whole pedigree on that. Codominance and multiple alleles went together. Our example for that was um, blood type. But if we're talking about how it's different from, um, from, from incomplete dominance, the difference is that you know if it's colors, red and blue would be a heterozygous showing both red and blue, whereas if it was incomplete dominance, red and blue heterozygous would be purple. Okay? So that's sort of our functional difference right now between codominance and incomplete. Then polygenic and epistasis went together. The only one I'd ask you to work, eye, uh, to work problems with would be eye color. All right, so that's, you know, not too much today. Uh, your homework, what I'd like you to have done for Monday beyond the chapter 14 um, guided reading and the other stuff that you got yesterday, uh, what I'd like you to have done for Monday is the last two problems on the genetics problems four, which are the ones we didn't do were six and seven. Those are both um using what we learned today okay i think that's all we have to talk about uh send emails if you have questions i hope you have a good day and a good weekend see ya